I'm going to be talking about the Indian monsoon. And I'm going to be telling you a story around the monsoon. And what is the Indian monsoon? It's an annual climatic extravaganza that converts a landscape that looks like this at a continental scale. Landscapes like this change in a few weeks to something like this. And this is also something that is pretty touch and go. So it, it affects, it not only affects the natural world, but it also affects our cities and our, uh, and our cultural landscapes. It, you can have too little of it, and that's a problem, or you can have too much of it, and that too is a problem. It's a problem for all living forms. It could be for livestock, it could be for our wildlife. So for something that our Indian finance minister at one point called the real finance minister of the country, and who the Federal, uh, the Federal Reserve Bank governor said that he is hostage to the Indian monsoon, I really thought that there'd be a lot of information. And for the story I needed to tell, I needed to show the monsoon. But when I looked, I Googled for it, I looked on Wikipedia, and I could not see the monsoon, a visualization that said, when did it come? How was it distributed? Where did it, uh, I mean, how, how was it varying over space and time? And this is not something that one could see. So I happened to be poking around on Google Earth and found a large data set of 36 years. And I said, OK, maybe I could make such a map. And then, to tell my story, I ended up making a map which, to my knowledge, is one of the first visualizations of how the Indian monsoon comes in and retreats. And actually, I learned in this process that it's not just the Indian monsoon. It's actually the South Asian monsoon. So I had the map. And then my story is not about the monsoon itself. It's about a bird. It's about the bird that's called the chataka, or the pite cuckoo, which in Indian lore is supposed to be a bird that only drinks water as it falls from the clouds and never off the ground. And it lives many months without water. And when it gets really th thirsty, it starts to call. And that's when it calls the monsoon. And that is when it showers, and that's when it drinks. And it's become a metaphor for the entire spiritual quest. And this bird in legend and lore, this is not something that's recent. 1,600 years ago, the Sanskrit poet Kalidasa said, uh, talked about this bird and its and, and there's its relationship with the rain. There have been mystics who've spoke, spoken about this bird. And not just that, <laughs> right up to this day, there are cartoonists showing how the bird is actually bringing the monsoon and announcing it. And, and actually, the arrival of the monsoon is announced by this bird. So what does science say? That to, uh, about 90 years ago, Hugh Whistler said that it's obvious we need a great deal more information about this bird, about its distribution and status. And we really needed to ask, does data show that this bird really does announce the arrival of the monsoon? So there was an effort to, to, to do a campaign, which brought, after four years, up to 2013, it got about 1,300 data points. But once we, and it, it tried to visualize the entire pattern, but it wasn't enough data to show this. But over the last four or five years, we worked with eBird, a platform which has enabled a much larger collection of data to which, through which we could visualize something like this. So there was a publicly available data set on both the monsoon and the pied cuckoo. And we said, let's try to put it together and see if this legend and lore of the arrival of the monsoon being announced by this bird is something that actually is held up. So we did manage to put some of that data together. And yes, it did look like, you know, as the uh, as time wore on, the, anim the bird seemed to expand its, its range. But then, this is what we finally were trying to do. And this is what we saw, that as the monsoon arrives, the bird that has its pre-monsoon range only in southern India starts to expand. And as it goes into the areas where these mystics, poets, and people have spoken for thousands of years about the bird coming and announcing the monsoon. It's really closely tied with the arrival of the monsoon. So the point I want to make is that I thought that the Earth Engine was an analytical platform. And the entire thing was something I was able to do using Earth Engine. 
And I think it can actually serve very well to be an extremely interesting and powerful storytelling platform. And that was a discovery that I thought I should share with you. Thanks. Uh, are there other legends related to the monsoon, I guess, or not? <laughs> there are many. And I thought to start with the monsoon, which, is such a, which has such a powerful imprint on the subcontinent, I should start with something that announced the monsoon. So I started looking at the rainbird, and I started looking at the legends surrounding just that. So there are many more. So I want to know if your data on the monsoons is doing some more. Like, are you, are you trying to like classify weather patterns or predict weather in a better way or something to, to help people to deal with this? No, to begin with, I, my, my aim was very modest. I just wanted to look at how the monsoon came in and, and, and how it uh, spread over the entire Indian subcontinent, to just visualize this spatiotemporally. And I think there is a lot more one could do. One could look at anomalies. One could look at you know, ways of potentially relating it to other environmental factors and so on and trying to predict. But that's not something that I've uh, attempted uh, in this. That's really cool. Thank you for sharing. I'm, I, I'm curious, how many years uh, of information have you been able to make the correlation over? And is there any publications that are coming out of this? Uh, no publication as of now. The, the monsoon data comes from 36 years of this uh, uh, climate hazards data, which is on the Google Earth Engine uh, data sets. And the data for the uh, Pied Cuckoo comes from the last seven years of data from eBird from India. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you.